Thank you very much to the CONSNIPS for inviting me into Khan as a whole. And as Bonnie pointed out, unfortunately for some of you, there is no off button on your clicker for me. Um, so <laughs> today I'm going to talk a little bit about public-private partnerships and more just some of the concerns that I may have on it. I know we don't have too long, so I'm hopefully just going to go to the next slide. And I have no relevant financial relationship to disclose regarding this talk. And so, once upon a time, Diane and I actually had a debate about whether the food industry was a friend or a foe, and back then, we both took sides. But I think, in a sense, it's a misnamed debate. I, I don't think the food industry has the luxury of being a friend or a foe. I think there are times when profits and health collide, and there are times when they do not. And suggesting that the food industry is one or the other forgets that fact, as might be evidenced by Campbell's Soup resalting their soups when they didn't sell as well as they'd hoped, or by uh, Indra Nui's shareholders from PepsiCo saying, listen, you can't focus as much as you were on this healthy stuff. You've got to start spending money on the sugar water, which is where we make our dollars. And so the food industry, I think in many cases, this is their approach to weight management. Um, they market food very heavily, and then they tell you to exercise and eat in moderation, and it is as simple as that. And I think that that is a gross oversimplification, and it's unfortunate, but that is the message that is put forward most of the time. At the Super Bowl, there was an advertisement uh, for Coca-Cola talking about being part of the solution, where they basically suggested that all calories count and that everything is in moderation. And what they're implying, of course, is that if you have too much Coca-Cola, like too much anything else, you are, in fact, running into problems, that the dose makes the poison. And I guess if the dose makes the poison, and if we're talking about Coca-Cola, avoiding the poison might be a, a better thing to do. Uh, but what's happened instead is that we're expected to applaud the fact that now there are smaller containers of Coca-Cola, that this in turn will help to fight obesity. And I would point out that these smaller containers are still larger than the original six ounce bottles of Coca-Cola uh, that once upon a time existed. And we're not so normalized as part of everyday consumption. In a sense, it's like suggesting we're gonna fight this with short cigarettes. And uh, for short cigarettes would not have helped with tobacco problems, it would not have helped tobacco cessation. But yet, that is what we're seeing uh, advertised as being a good thing. And then sometimes we'll have, and I put this in for Richard's benefit, um, this is the snack size McFlurry. Uh, this wasn't in my talk, but I had to rush it in, where this snack uh, has the caloric equivalent of a Snickers bar dissolved in a 12-ounce can of Coca-Cola and has about 15 teaspoons of sugar, and yet it is labeled as a snack. That's one hell of a snack. And then, of course, there's the, but we can make our products healthier. And that is the way the industry puts it forward. But less awful and healthier aren't the same thing. And we also know that health halos exist. That sometimes when we see foods that are advertised as being healthier, these are sold in, for instance, vending machines that are supposedly healthy now. We consume more of them. And more importantly, there have been studies on certain foods that show that having these brand extensions bring more people to the original brand in the first place. So they may well backfire. I think a lot of the times it's more of an argument of, well, now we're going to only go 30 over officer instead of going 50 over. And I don't think that that is a particularly fulsome argument to suggest that this is a good thing that we should be applauding as far as the food industry's efforts towards obesity. You know, David Katz from Yale has called this a flood. I've used these slides quite a lot. It's a flood of calories and processed foods. And really, just like I don't think we would have cured tobacco with shorter cigarettes or bigger filters, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with throwing more water on our flood, where water today are the processed foods that we're consuming, the huge amounts of sugar. I think food is more than just the nutrients in its compartments and containers. And part of the problem is the fact we have so normalize the consumption of convenience in society. And that is still going to be sold by any efforts made by the food industry because that is what they sell, convenience. And so there will be no one intervention that will work. Uh, I know that likely tomorrow Dr. Applebaum is going to say you can't demonize one food. Um, but really, no one sandbag stops a flood. But when you've got, in sugar-sweetened beverages, for instance, a sandbag that's responsible for 24 to 36% of the excess calories being consumed in North America since the 1970s, that's a really juicy sandbag. <laughs> so my line in the sand is very simple. Um, from that list of things, I think we can absolutely have discussion and debate. I'm all for that. 
But I don't think we should be giving votes at tables to the food industry, nor do I think we should be taking money from them. I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem because it will and does lead to direct and indirect co-branded sales. It serves as high gloss brand polish where the association is using the uh, goodwill of the institution that is helpful to polish their brand. It confers undeserved positive emotional associations, definitely silences and softens criticism. It promotes industry-friendly spin, deflecting blame from industry products. It provides ammunition, no doubt, for fighting health-positive industry-negative legislation. You can't you know, consider taxing us because then we won't be able to support things the way we currently do, or we are part of the solution, not the problem. And most importantly for me, I think, it absolutely necessitates compromise. The person who cares the least in a relationship has the most power. And if what we're caring about is health, there is no doubt in my mind who cares the least about that. And that's not me vilifying industry. It's that industry's job is to sell food. They're good at it. We should allow them to do it. We just shouldn't help them to do it. Thank you.